Hi, this is David Moskowitz here with Membership Academy. In this video, what I'd like to talk about is how to smell a rat refunder. Now, if you've been working online for any amount of time, if you've been selling products via memberships or via uh, straight product sales, you've probably gotten a few of these rat refunders sending you emails asking for money back for products or services that they never actually bought. Now it is of course important to immediately and quickly refund your legitimate customers if they do ask for that. However, you're also going to be getting emails from people who've never bought anything from your site and they're still asking for a refund. Basically, they're trying to scam you to send them back money. Now over the years, I've noticed some commonalities between some of these rat refunders. So in this video, I'd like to discuss with you some of these things that I found. So to start with, what you really need to do, of course, is to make sure that this person is not actually a customer. So you do need to get their username. You do need to get their email address, uh, any email address they may have signed up with in order to verify, in fact, that they are not a customer. Now, within those emails, you're also going to get some information that's going to, you know, kind of make your BS detector go off. And some of these things that I found that set off my own BS detector... Uh, I found in several emails over the years, they're, they're pretty consistent. You, you'll get them quite frequently. Now, the first thing that I noticed is that the amount that they're asking for or the amount that they said that they paid is actually different than any product price that I've sold. Uh, for example here, let me show you a couple of emails that I've gotten. So you can see here that uh, this person is claiming that I charged them $33.87. And I have no product services anything that is for the price of 3387 so immediately my BS detector went off and said up oh, this guy's trying to scam me so uh, of course I, I searched for their email address couldn't find it sent them back an email I can't find your email address what's your PayPal ID uh, in which case they often say something like oh I didn't pay you with a with a PayPal I paid you by check or I paid you by this or that and again that's another red flag because I only charge with PayPal so if they're telling me that they paid differently than the only billing system that I'm using, bingo, that's another red flag. So number two would be how they paid you is different than how you actually bill. Another thing you're going to notice with this is that there's going to be some English grammar mistakes. Now, I've lived in foreign countries. I've studied foreign languages, so I know that a foreign language can be difficult, and you're going to be making mistakes when you're, when you're learning it and writing it. So I'm willing to give a, a little bit of benefit of doubt to this. But almost always, um, the person writing the email will make some sort of basic grammar mistakes or make some uh, considerable spelling mistakes uh, in here. You can see that uh, they spelled a Ford wrong, as well as consideration. Now, uh, I often write emails quite quickly, so you know I'll make some spelling mistakes now and then. Uh, but this one has quite a few advances also here, and this is another email that I just got, I think, last week, saying that uh, that they want their check quickly, that I'm a big company, and so I can of course send them their refund very quickly. Obviously. They don't know that I'm very diligent about checking this sort of thing. And so, of course, I emailed them back saying, you know, I can't find your account. I need more information. I need proof of purchase. And that's another thing that they're not going to be able to send you is some sort of proof of purchase. So you're going to need them to send you a PayPal receipt or perhaps a cash uh, check if you accept checks. So oftentimes they're not going to send you that information. Now, another thing that I found that will occasionally come up, and I hope I don't offend you by getting into this, but they'll often quote some sort of religious reason that they're either canceling or unable to pay, or that they're uh, that they're changing services. In this case, they said that uh, they found a Christian company. Um, I know when I was looking for a property here in Singapore, a place to rent, often a lot of the uh, the scammers were saying that they were that they were unable to show me the apartment that they were overseas on missionary work. So of course that's another red flag right there. Without any offense to anyone who, who who follows any particular religion, but I often find that emails that contain religious references are from people who are just trying to use that to try to scam you unfortunately. So those are a few ways that I smell rat refunders. If you have any other ways go ahead and post those in the comment section and hopefully we can create some sort of database of known ways that scammers try to get money back from us that don't deserve it. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much and good luck with your membership site.